Curious about computers or consciousness? Well, what if computers were conscious? That's the question from the book of what if we're gonna explore with even more questions. What if computers were conscious? So computers follow a bunch of instructions. Turn on, open the browser, turn up the volume. They usually do what humans tell them to do. But what if they thought for themselves? What if computers were conscious like we are? You see, there are many stories about conscious computers and artificially intelligent machines or AI, right? Sometimes the computers take over the world because the humans are not needed anymore. Other times the two live side by side. If we're living together with computers and they act similarly to humans, we'd need to change many of our systems. For example, would the computers go to school like we do? How would they be handled in court? How would you know when computers become conscious in the first place? Would you measure it with medical equipment? How would you hook up the equipment? Would you ask the computer questions? How would you be able to tell if it was really thinking or just following a complex rule book? Do you think computers will ever be conscious? Well, what would they think about if they were? How would you interact with one? Would it argue with you? Would you argue with it? Do you think, and by the way, who would win an argument with an artificially intelligent computer, right? What does it say about our minds if computers are able to think too? Should we treat computers differently just because their brains are different from ours? If computers can think, can they also feel emotions? So you see there's lots of questions to consider around the single question of if, what if computers were conscious? Now for a little more information on artificial intelligence, it says there's been a lot of progress in creating smart machines that solve specific problems. We now have ones that produce Google search results, win chess, and interpret our language in the way we speak. But so far, we haven't figured out exactly how to make a machine that can think as broadly as humans do. Computer scientists, philosophers, and engineers have a few different directions they're investigating, though. One of those ways is by looking into our own brains. Since we know we think, the human brain would be a good model that we could break down and figure out how to reconstruct in a computer, right? Well, another way is by having computers get better at symbol processing. You have thoughts and your thoughts have symbols attached to them. For instance, when you're reading, you're looking at the letters and words on a page. You either know or are learning how to move those symbols around into other working symbols. You know that thinking is something you actively do, but a thought is an object. We might be able to make an AI just, as, just by strengthening its ability to manipulate symbols. Pretty wild, huh? So yet another way to build artificial intelligence would be to create a system of network or connections. Just like your brain has different sections that perform different fun functions, a network can do the same. For instance, if a computer is looking at a book and trying to figure out what the words say, it might have one small network looking at the shape of the letters, another network looking at the shape of the whole word, another one determining the meaning of the word, and yet another network determining the meaning of the words together. So each of these smaller networks can work together in a larger network to create an intelligence. So you see how this kind of is layered on top of each other, these, these different networks. Which way is right? Well, we don't quite know yet. All of them show some promise and it'll probably take some combination to create a truly thinking machine, but definitely stay tuned to this because AI in this world is, is emerging and, and evolving very quickly right before our eyes. So another little nugget um, to, to investigate here around this idea all the way back remembers what if computers were consciousness and talking about this idea of artificial intelligence, we can go back to a philosopher by the name of John Cyril. And I may be mispronouncing this name, so apologies, John. But John Cyril published a paper in 1980 that included the Chinese room argument. This thought experiment has a man who doesn't know Chinese in a room with two slots in the wall. Through one slot, arrive Chinese symbols. When they come in, the man looks up what to do with them in a very large book. The book doesn't tell him the meaning of the symbols, but it tells him what, the sim what symbols to pass through the other slot. Outside the room is a woman who speaks Chinese. 
She writes down Chinese symbols and passes them through the first slot. Out of the second slot, she sees new symbols from the room. From her perspective, it seems like she's talking to another Chinese speaker. But from the man's perspective, he's just passing symbols out of the room based on what the book tells him to do. So he never knows that the Chinese speaker is outside of the room, nor does he even know that the symbols are Chinese. John Cyril said that this is how computers work. Based on certain inputs, they give certain outputs. Computers never understand what they are doing. Therefore, artificial intelligence will never be truly intelligent, according to this philosopher. This thought experiment is one of the most popular in philosophy and has sparked debate among philosophers, neuroscientists, and AI researchers. But we're really curious, what do you think? Do you think Cyril is right? Or can you poke holes in his argument like others have? And if you're wondering, wow, how have others been able to poke holes in this argument? Well, look it up. I think you'll find, as mentioned, it's a very popular uh, thought experiment for philosophers right now. So I'd be really curious to hear what you think, not just about that thought experiment, but this whole question about what if computers were conscious? So as always, thanks for getting curious and stay curious.